Hello and welcome back to another tutorial. My name is Mike Davies and in this video I'll be showing you how to scale selections using GIMP. I'll be using GIMP version 2.10.22 which is the latest version of GIMP at the time of this tutorial. Before I get into that, don't forget to check out my website at daviesmediadesign.com. You can enroll in my GIMP 2.10 masterclass from beginner to pro photo editing on Udemy. You can enroll in any of my Skillshare classes by visiting gimpschool.com. And you can get more with a premium membership to Davies Media Design. And I'll include all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So this is a fairly easy process, scaling selection areas in GIMP. Here I have an image open and I've already got a selection area drawn around my subject. I just use the quick mask tool to do this. I have an entire tutorial dedicated to the quick mask tool if you want to check that out. But once you have your selection area drawn, you may want to scale this up or down. So what you'll want to do is come over here to your toolbox and click and hold. And if I come down here, you'll see we have the scale option. You can also access this using the Shift S shortcut key on your keyboard. So right now the scale tool by default will scale the pixels inside of my selection area. So if I click and drag my mouse and let me hold the control key to drag from the center, that's going to scale the pixels up inside of our selection area. So I'll come over here and hit scale. That will add those scaled up pixels inside of a brand new floating selection. So I can either anchor the floating selection to the existing layer, which simply means we're merging all the pixels here that we just scaled up onto the existing layer, or I can add it to its own new layer by clicking the new layer icon, which is what I just did there. So let me hit control Z to back up. So here we have our selection area once again. If I only wanted to scale the perimeter or the boundary of the selection area, what I'll do is come over here and click on the selection option under transform. So this is under the tool options for the scale tool. And now with that transform option checked, when I click on the selection area, that's going to add these transform handles around the selection area. And when I click and drag one of the handles that will scale that selection area boundary up or I can go the opposite way and scale it down. And if I hold the control key, that'll scale it from the center so I can go up or I can scale it down, depending on which way I drag my mouse. So let's release that and come over here and click scale. So now we've scaled our selection boundary up. Let me click on here one more time. You'll also notice I can move this by using the four squares in the middle. So I can move this around like so if I wanted to. Let me just hit control Z though, and that will bring that back. Something else I want to point out is if I come over here, you guys may have your chain link icon unlinked, which means let me click on that. You'll see now that link is broken. If I try to scale this now, it'll only scale in one dimension. So in this case, we're scaling the width. And if I come over here to the bottom, that will scale the height. And I can still scale this diagonally, but it's not going to maintain the aspect ratio of the original selection area. So let me come over here and click reset. So you may want to make sure that that chain link icon is locked, or you may want to make sure that this is checked, the keep aspect option. And that allows us to maintain the aspect ratio as we scale this up or down. So let me just exit out of here because I've already scaled this up. And I'll hit Control Shift A to deselect that selection area. We also have, of course, our shape selection tools. So let's go with the rectangle select tool here. So when I draw this, the shape selection tools like the rectangle and ellipse select tools are a little different because we can simply use the handles that are already here inside the tool to scale this up or down. So if I come over here and click on one of these handles, that will allow me to scale this up or down. I can also use the handles on the side if I only want to scale the width or the handle on the top to scale the height. If I had a particular aspect ratio I wanted to scale this with, I can come over here and check the fixed aspect ratio box. However, if the aspect ratio is different than the current aspect ratio, it will change this. So for example, if I drag this now, you'll see because we have this set to one to one, it will scale this up or down as a square. So let me uncheck that. That could be one reason why you would want to use the scale tool instead of using the rectangle select tool to scale a rectangle selection area. So let me hit shift S on my keyboard to grab the scale tool again. So long as the transform mode is set to selection, 
and the chain link icon here is linked. I can now scale this with the current aspect ratio, so that really saves us some work. We can just scale this up or down, and we can move it around and then click scale. So I'll hit Control Shift A. I do want to demonstrate one last thing, and that's whenever you freehand draw some sort of a regular selection area. So let's come over and grab the free select tool. So let's say we freehand draw a selection area like that, and then I'll hit the Enter key. So if I wanted to scale this up or down, I can't use the free select tool to click inside here to scale it up or down. You'll see that's just going to create another little node there. So what I have to do is hit Shift S. That's going to bring up the scale tool, and now I can scale this up or down. And come over here and click scale. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, you can check out my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Davies Media Design. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can also check out any of the links to my resources in the description of the video. But thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.